Now coming to the final and most uh, interesting part, which is of course the poetry of Emir al Qais. What is so special about the poetry of Emir al Qais? Uh, the way I can put it simply is that when you read his poetry, there are so many images that come to your mind. Uh, the way he compares things and uh, gives, he makes a picture, he builds a picture uh, when he speaks. Uh, and he uses a lot of these poetic devices and uh, styles. But uh, these are not unique to the poetry of Emre al Qais. If you read other classical Arabic poetry and otherwise, you will find many of these styles. But what is special about Emir al Qais is that he is the one who invented many of these styles. He was the first to start using uh, such devices in Arabic poetry. And uh, to just give you an example or a taste of what I'm trying to talk about, uh, I'm going to go ahead and try and explain uh, a little part of his poetry, hopefully. And uh, if you understand Arabic, this will be much easier for you to understand. It's very hard to, you know, just explain this in English. But if you are a student of the Arabic language, inshallah, uh, I'm sure uh, you will enjoy this. So Emir al-Qais, on one occasion, he describes uh, a very lonely and sad night. A simple concept. A night in which he is feeling very sad. And this is how he expresses his feelings about this uh, lonesome night. He says, وَلَيْلٍ كَمَوْجِ الْبَحْرِ أَرْخَى سُدُولَهُ عَلَيَّ بِأَنْوَاعِ الْهُمُومِ لِيَبْتَلِي A night which has drawn its curtains around me. The night has drawn its curtains around me. And the worries and the problems come upon me as the waves of an ocean. Now if you picture the waves of an ocean, uh, they hit the shore one after the other continuously. And on this night, this is how the problems and worries and all the negative thoughts are hitting Emir al -Qais, like the waves of the ocean relentlessly. And he is covered by the darkness, by the curtains of this dark night. فَقُلْتُ لَهُ لَمَّا تَمَطَّى بِسُلْبِهِ وَأَرْدَفَ أَعْجَازًا وَنَاءَ بِكَلْكَلِ So I said to her, when she seemed to uh, extend her sides and drag on her length and to advance slowly with her chest. الْكَلْكَلْ is the chest. وَنَاءَ بِكَلْكَلِ is to uh, raise the chest. So the knight is advancing, raising her chest slowly. أَلَا أَيُّهَا اللَّيْلُ الطَّوِيلُ أَلَنْجَلِي بِسُبْحٍ وَمَا الْإِسْبَاهُ مِنْكِ بِأَمْثَلِي O oh, you uh, tedious night, O oh, you long night, do you not go away so that the morning may arise, although I do not have much hope that the morning will take away my worries. So Emir al Qais, he's sad in the night and he's sad in the morning. And he wants the morning to come, but he knows his problems are not going to go away in the morning. Here Emir al Qais, uh, he feels that this night is dragging on uh, forever and it is not ending. So he says, it is as if the stars are tied to the mount of Yidbul by strong cables. The stars cannot go away so that the morning can come. The stars are tied by strong cables to the mount of Yidbul. Uh, this is something I find very rich and intriguing in his poetry, how he uh, defines, how he describes such a uh, simple concept, but in such a unique and profound fashion. Another uh, example is uh, how uh, he describes 
a mountain which is under heavy rainfall. He says, كَأَنَّ أَبَانًا فِي أَفَانِينِ وَدْقِهِ uh, Aban, a mount called Aban, it seems under the heavy rainfall. كَبِيرُ أُنَاسٍ فِي بِجَادٍ مُزَمَّلِ It looks like an old chief, an old sheikh, wrapped in a striped mantle, standing there wrapped in a striped coat. So this mountain, it resembles this old sheikh standing there in a striped coat. And then he uh, describes uh, the rainfall that is unloading on the desert. وَأَلْقَى بِسَحْرَاءِ الْغَبِيتِ بَآءَهُ نُزُولَ الْيَمَانِ ذِي الْعِيَابِ الْمُخَوَّلِ The cloud unloads its fright on the desert of Gabit. He's talking about the rain. Like a merchant of Yemen, like a Yemeni merchant unloading uh, the bales of his rich apparel, of his expensive apparel, as if the uh, the merchant unloads his merchandise, the rain falls on the desert. 